Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content, process, and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is information architecture, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content records, and business processes. This module is part of the Architecture and Systems Knowledge domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll discuss some content organization and classification structures, including taxonomy, folksonomy and social tagging, ontologies and topic maps, and metadata. Virtually everything associated with information management begins with organizing and classifying content so it can be found and leveraged. Hard work that's absolutely vital to solution success because without it, all you've built is an enormous bit bucket into which everything is thrown and nothing readily emerges. This work begins with the development or refinement of a taxonomy, a hierarchical representation of a body of information based on identified categories or labels. According to Patrick Lamb's 2007 work, Organizing Knowledge, there are seven different options available for creating one. Lists, trees, hierarchies, polyhierarchies, facets, matrices, and system maps. A list is the simplest representation of a taxonomy. It's particularly useful when the domain is simple and the amount of content is small. Organizing phone numbers by country code is an example of this. Trees provide an implied relationship between categories and subcategories, the branches of the tree structure. And they're useful when a list gets to be too long and can be broken into natural sections. The listings and categories of a yellow pages directory is an example of this. Hierarchies are more formal and less flexible than trees in that elements can appear in only one place. Examples include military rankings and org charts. Polyhierarchies are used when an item belongs in more than one place in the real world, and multiple organizing principles are required. This provides virtual linking between hierarchies. An example is a single collection of content concerning diseases, which can be organized by, say, affected body part and cause. Facets are multidimensional taxonomies comprised of multiple tags that each represent an individual taxonomy. Thus, the content is categorized in multiple ways within a single interface. One good example is represented by the ability to select wines based on characteristics such as type, price, varietal, and region. Matrices are used to organize multiple individual taxonomies that intersect. For instance, IT project management includes information about the project staff, supporting documents, and stages of implementation. A matrix taxonomy would allow users to navigate by jumping from one taxonomy to another and expose different kinds of information related to the original query. System maps are visual representations of a domain of knowledge that are labeled with relevant categories, like a diagram of the human body that points the way to medical content about the human nervous system. Now, which of all of these will prove to be most effective for you depends on a number of factors, including organization size, the breadth of market served, degree of regulation, and so forth. For instance, large or complex enterprises with many operations may benefit from more structure rather than less in order to manage and reconcile the various terminologies. But even if you have a taxonomy you already like, changes in your organization can necessitate a rethink at any time such as after setting up a new division, buying another company, or being bought by one. Whatever your particular case, bear in mind that the goal is to strike a workable balance between how strictly your terms are defined and locked into place, a controlled vocabulary, and how well your search and retrieval works. For instance, unregimented types of taxonomies like folksonomies and social tagging may be highly populist, but they can make it hard to develop the standard definitions needed to support effective findability. Not in the least because you can use standard terminology to force users to select from vocabulary values that you've chosen for them, and present it perhaps in a drop-down menu. Definitionally, you should know that folksonomies are combinations of individuals' views of how things should be organized. The result of collaborative and personalized approaches to tagging content, they're largely unregulated. But curiously enough, 
they often produce clusters of tags that communities can then rally around. Social tagging is end-user tagging that's usually web-based. Generally enabled by very simple free-form interfaces, it usually supports the leaving of feedback by other users and lets people tag and retag content as they desire. Over time, this can lead to the emergence of new categories that were built by consensus. Ontologies and topic maps occupy the other extreme because they're highly structured, not just to minimize opportunities for semantic variation, but also to help analyze domain knowledge, as you'll see in a second. They're more common in the academic and scientific communities than in general business, mostly because their reliance on definition of structure makes the rigor of development more justifiable. An ontology is the explicit specification of the relationships between concepts. More even than an ultra-controlled vocabulary, it represents an entire domain of knowledge, applying rules that not only defines terms, but also the relationships between them. The classic example is that of a salad, the ontology of which would include everything up to and including the growers, the ingredients, the rodents that eat them in the field, and how a salad is different in Japan versus Italy. A topic map is a visual representation of a knowledge domain, and thus is a type of ontology. In the diagram shown, topics are depicted as peach-colored ovals, the relationships between them as purple lines, and specific occurrences as green circles. As you can see, while a single topic map can contain a large number of items, it also can show you how many there are and how the pieces fit together. One thing all these alternatives have in common is a basis in one way or another in metadata, which is data about data. Labels or tags stored either within or externally from content that describes the content for purposes of identifying, organizing, and retrieving it. Structurally, metadata's basic unit is the statement, which consists of a property, like color, and a value, like blue. A statement also describes resources that can be used by content technologies, such as a search engine, that would be instructed to find all products with a property equal to color and a value of blue. How effective your metadata is depends upon how unified a vocabulary you use. And since developing and agreeing upon that vocabulary can be highly subjective and enormously challenging, a number of formal standards have been promulgated to use as contextual touchstones. A few of the more prominent ones are shown here, and they're also discussed elsewhere in this course. This module has discussed some primary content organization and classification structures, including taxonomy, folksonomy and social tagging, ontologies and topic maps, and metadata. Having completed it, you may next wish to review the module on information relationship building and automation. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.